In this video, we will be discussing longitudinal design in REDCap. The default project design for newly created REDCap projects is the classic design in which all data collection instruments are meant to be used to capture data one time for each record. For example, in cases where you have a cross-sectional survey, assessing the prevalence of a disease, or something like a registration form for a training. However, there may be instances in which you need to use an instrument repeatedly a specific number of times over the course of your project. Say you're conducting a clinical trial and you are recording each participant's vital signs pre and post intervention, or you're completing a visit documentation form for three follow-up visits for each participant. In these instances, you can implement the longitudinal design in your REDCap project which allows users to define the time points or events at which each instrument is used. To use the longitudinal design feature in your project, navigate to the project setup page and under main project settings, click to enable longitudinal design. After you have enabled longitudinal design in your project, you will see that a section appears in the project setup page allowing you to define your events and designate instruments. So first click define my events. Here I'm going to add an event for each time point at which I'm going to be collecting data in REDCap. In this example, I'm going to have a baseline event and a follow-up event. You can also group your events into arms in cases where you're collecting data for different groups of participants. For example, if my project had an intervention arm and a control arm, I could navigate to this tab and click to add a new arm for my intervention. Each arm can have as many events as you wish. So for this case, I'm going to have the same baseline event, and I'm also going to add an intervention visit as well as a follow-up. After you have defined all of your events, click Designate Instruments for My Events to specify which forms will be completed at each event. In this case, I have a demographics form that is only completed once at baseline, but I have a visit form and satisfaction questionnaire that I want to complete at both baseline and follow-up one. If your project has multiple arms, you'll see that tabs appear for each arm that you've created in the project. So just click on the tab to designate your forms to those events. In this case, the intervention arm is capturing the same forms at baseline and at follow-up one, but because there's an extra visit at intervention, I'm going to capture the visit documentation form at this visit as well. When entering data, you will see that the instruments that you have created are available for data collection under each event that they have been designated to. You can access each form by clicking on the status icon next to your desired instrument in the column corresponding to your intended event. For a multi-arm project, when you navigate to Add Edit Records, you will see that you have the option of selecting which arm you wish to enter data in. The benefit of using the longitudinal design is that you do not have to create duplicates of the same instrument, such as a baseline visit documentation form and a follow-up one visit documentation form. Rather, if you are collecting the same information, you can create one form and make it available across several events. Here are a few tips to consider. Longitudinal datasets are exported in long format with a row for each event per record. While creating your project, it's recommended to enter a few test records and export a test dataset to be sure of what your final dataset will look like. Using the longitudinal design feature may change the way you reference fields in branching logic, calculated fields, and data imports. After setting up your longitudinal structure, you will see that every event in each arm that you create has its own unique event name that is auto-generated by REDCap. You can see this on the Define My Events page. When writing branching logic statements or calculated equations, you can reference fields from other events. 
To do this, the event name must be added in square brackets to the beginning of the variable name that's also in square brackets. Also, when importing data via the data import tool, you must specify the REDCap event name in each row along with the record ID. Events and form designations should be finalized in development mode before moving to production. Make sure you've finalized the timeline and frequency of your data collection. You can consult your IRB approved protocol, your data analysis plan, or your standard operating procedures when creating your longitudinal setup. Of course, there are always instances where changes need to be made to events after you have moved to production and data collection has begun. Some modifications might pose a risk to existing data. For example, deleting any events will result in loss of the data that was collected in that event. Renaming events can also affect existing branching logic statements, calculations, reports, and other features. So at Children's National, changes to events must be made by a REDCap administrator upon request. If you need to make changes to your events, you can let us know via our support request form, and we will get in touch with you about any risks for your project before implementing changes.